Hello and welcome to another studio vlog. First of all, I just received a package, so I'm continuing with setting up my craft room. Let's open this package together because I think it's something that's going to help me with my desk organization. So this is a monitor stand. I want to put this right there so that I have a risen platform on which I can store more things and use up less desk space. I'm excited. And this was inspired by one of my lovely viewers, Karen. Thank you again, Karen. Karen had some great suggestions for how I could store my little journals. And one of those suggestions was to have like a little acrylic shelf, which I've also ordered, which will hopefully come today as well. But that gave me the idea of using this kind of acrylic shelf for my table. It's so pretty. <laughs> so that goes right here. And one thing I can use it for, which is really cool, is I have my laptop here. <laughs> you can see this is what I'm recording. I need this to mirror what I see in the camera so that I always know whether I'm in frame or what's showing on the camera. So this is really cool that I can have that up here and still store things underneath here. For example, my little dish with beads or the stress oxides that I use a lot, or the ones that I'm currently using. Clamps to hold my journals open. And I'm sure I'll think of more things as I work. And maybe you can see here a little bit, my glass desk is up, so let me show you that. So Hubby was able to put this up quite easily. I'm quite happy with it. It doesn't make the room look so cluttered because it is glass. Let me show you the view from when you walk in. So I think it's still fine. It doesn't really bother me and it really helps me a lot surface space wise. So as you can see, I have my die cut machine here now. And here I showed you last time I had this tea box that I got from my Goodwill and in here I stored all my thicker dies and my plates for my die cut machine and now I also added all of my embossing folders which fit in here really nicely and then next to it I put the box that I had in my bookshelf which is this beautiful wooden drawer which is also from a secondhand store in which I have stored all my dies in envelopes. I can flip through them, which makes me super happy. I love how organized it is. In the front here, I have the smaller Tim Holtz dies. And next to it, I have this wooden tray. I bought this new at a local store. And the purpose of this is to have projects in here that I'm currently working on or that I plan to work on in the near future. I can always, it's quite heavy, but I can <laughs> take this to my desk or at least I can just take the items out to work on and that way they are off my craft desk. So that really makes sense. And I love having some empty space here to have a place to open books or to just have some space to put whatever I need to there. Next, I want to speak about my stamp storage solution, which is not a good solution at all, as it turns out. So as you can see, I have all my stamp storage boxes here now. I have labeled them with my label maker, but they're not sticking to this kind of plastic. First, I stuck them down just how they came out of my label maker. That didn't stick, they all fell down. So then I added double-sided tape onto the back and as you can see, <laughs> they're still falling down. A viewer had suggested that I stamp all the images and then add them to the box lids so that I know what the stamps look like because looking at it like this, you don't really see what the stamps look like because I'm not using the acetate sheets anymore that they come with. But first of all, it took me forever to stamp this. I don't like the way it came out. My fingers were completely black after this. <laughs> so I cannot imagine doing that 13 more times. 
And one other thing that doesn't work is if I need something from in the middle or from the bottom. I'll show you what happens when I pull it out. Yeah, you see that catastrophe? <laughs> that is not going to work for me. But another kind viewer, The Blue Chronicle, thank you again, sent me a video of another stamp storage solution, which I'm really loving. So I will share that with you here. So I think that's what I'm going to attempt, but that's going to take a while and I don't have the binders for that either yet. So next I need to edit my plan with me October video, which will already be up by the time this vlog is up and I need to schedule that one and I need to schedule my vlog number two as well. And I'm really happy that it's finally sunny again. It's been raining so, so much. There should be some sun the next few days. Tomorrow a friend of mine and I are going to Ikea and we're going to get some more things for the apartment. For example, I want to get some curtains to make the rooms feel more cozy. So for example, I want some curtains hanging here just over the window so that they won't go over this here and that there. Just where the window is, just some sheer white curtains. So it's the next day and the other package arrived, which was this acrylic shelf here. This is one meter long and it will go up here on the wall. I think I will have to either move this happiness higher or put it on another wall completely. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually I got it the wrong way. It's like this. And then on top of there I can put my small journals that are currently in that little box on this shelf, on display. Because this box is going to grow too small, obviously, when I make more, and you can't really see them in there. So here on display, they will be great. So thank you again, Karen, for that suggestion. I love it. So I just came back from Ikea with my girlfriend, and I just had to get this picture. I've been eyeing this for as long as they have had it at Ikea. And I think this is the last batch that they have. I just love this deer so much. And he's going to go here. Actually, it's not a deer, it's a stag. <laughs> he's going to go up there. And the other thing I had to get are some fairy lights. These are with battery. So I got some rechargeable batteries and I plan on hanging that somewhere here because I think that will look really cute. So let's try that. Ha! It works. <laughs> you can hardly see them on camera, but they are lit up. Okay, so there's what that looks like when that stag is hanging. I love him. I'm wondering if he looks a little bit lonely there. But then again, I don't want to clutter everything up either. I will put something on this wall. So maybe I'll put, as I said, I think the happiness one on that wall and then have my small journals above there. But I need to wait for my brother to come with the drill because I cannot mount this on my own with nails, unfortunately. So it's now later in the evening. I just had a really lovely Skype with one of my friends. 
And now I need to edit down one of my junk journal snacks videos into an Instagram post, which will be less than one minute. Let me show you how I do that. I do all of my editing in iMovie, which is a program that comes with any Apple computer that you buy. Totally sufficient for all of my editing. So I'm starting off in this case with a video which is almost 21 minutes and I have to get this down to one minute. For some reason, I really love this challenge. <laughs> so I start first by getting rid of all of the like extras. <laughs> I would call them like all of the music, for example, and everything here at the end. The next thing I will do is get rid of all of my sound. Next, I will speed up everything which is currently in normal speed because I was talking, so obviously I couldn't speed it up. But for my Instagram video, I need to speed all of this up. I'll start off with double speed for anything that is currently normal speed. And of course, I will be cutting a lot of this out later. But this gives me a starting point. I already have to think about the placement of where I have things when I'm filming because the formats of Instagram and YouTube are completely opposite. So the YouTube format is horizontal and the Instagram format is vertical. Meaning if I then play this on Instagram with the Instagram format, it's going to cut away anything that is on the right and the left of the screen. So I have to keep that in mind when I'm filming to always film in the center, <laughs> which is not always easy because you are in the flow and you're concentrating on what you're saying. And then to also concentrate to be in the middle of your frame is kind of a lot. So there are videos where I forget to do that. And it's just a junk, junk journal snacks videos where I need to think of this. I do the best I can. <laughs> So doing all of that, I'm already down to 10 minutes 55. So that's progress. And now I can go ahead and go through all of the frames again and see what is not really relevant for the page I'm working on, which I can cut out. So I have to see where do I really start? So I talk a lot about various things at the beginning. So that's great. That will make it easy to cut something out. So here's the first thing I really do for the page is this fabric here. So I think I'll start the Instagram video by showing where I spray the coffee onto the fabric. Everything else before that is kind of irrelevant. Okay, down to a little over seven minutes. So I'm just going to continue cutting out things that are not relevant and then hopefully I will get to under one minute. So it's a few minutes later and I managed to get the video down to 38 seconds, which is great. The shorter, the better for Instagram. And now I want to add some music to it. I will go to Epidemic Sound, which is the website I use. I have a monthly subscription. That way I have the license for all of the mu music that I have in my videos and on Instagram. I don't have to worry about copyright. So depending on what mood I want to convey for this particular video, I will look for a specific kind of music. A lot of times I like classical music, slow, calm music. I can also see what I downloaded, for example, the past week or the past month. If I need something quick and I don't want to browse through new music, I can go through some of the things I have downloaded in the past and then just choose one of those. And for Instagram, I usually choose actually a different kind of music than I would choose for my YouTube videos. My YouTube videos usually have very calm music, whereas I have a feeling for Instagram, the viewers are a bit different. 
and I usually choose music which is a little bit more upbeat or maybe a little bit more trendy than for my YouTube videos. In this case, I don't want anything too slow because I don't think it would fit to this kind of video. So maybe this one would be a good option. I think that would work well for Instagram so I can download the full mix and then import it to iMovie and then I also need to decide where I want the music to start like do I want it to start right from the beginning because I only have 37 seconds so if the main part of the song doesn't start to like I don't know 20 seconds or so in it's not going to work then I need to cut off some of the beginning so here basically the song starts getting more upbeat around 30 seconds so that's too late so I need to cut off some of the beginning but I need to see where it makes sense from the song for example I think I can cut it right here so I'll delete everything before that and then I'll just move that part to, to the beginning. I'll turn down the volume, although it doesn't really matter for Instagram. Instagram kind of always has the same volume setting, I have a feeling, which is very annoying and too loud. And then I'll take everything out that goes over where my video ends. And now I will have a look at the whole thing on my big screen. But I have to keep in mind that on Instagram, we will only see this middle part. So I'm happy with that. That means I can export this and that will upload to my desktop and from there I can sync it with my phone to then post on Instagram. So I always keep in mind when I make a video for Instagram that it's very, very different to making a long format YouTube video. Instagram is very fast paced. People just scroll and if you don't hold their attention, immediately your chance is gone. <laughs> so you have to make the video as interesting as possible to keep the viewer engaged. So that's why upbeat music is good and there always has to be a lot of action on the screen. But I actually love that contrast to YouTube and taking a long format which is slow and calm and make it into something fast paced and like really down to the point in under a minute. I, I just think that's really interesting from the editing point of view. In between various other tasks, I always try to keep up with my business emails because since I have an online shop where I sell digital products, I have to always check to see if there's any issues with any of the orders. So now I just checked and I got an email from a lady who bought some digitals a couple of days ago and she said she hasn't received the link for the items that she bought. So links always go out automatically as soon as you purchase, you get the links. But sometimes these emails end up in the spam folder or a different email was given than what the buyer is checking. So that's how these things happen. So now I'm just going to go in my store, check the order and resend her the link manually and reply to her asking her to also check her spam folder and hopefully that will take care of that. So in this case, the customer even had the order number, which makes my life a lot easier. So I can very easily find the order. I can click on it. I can see it's paid in full and I can just resend the download link. Can I see it's been sent? And I will copy the email address and let her know that this is where the link went so that she can double check that. Good morning, it's the next day and it's about 8.30 in the morning. It's really cold, it's like seven degrees, but it's sunny. So this is the first walk I'm taking from my new flat. 
and actually it's the first walk I've been taking since over a month since all this crazy moving business started so I'm super happy to be walking again so I'm finally at my Schönbrunn Palace Park where I usually go for walks and interestingly it's about the same distance from my new flat as it was from the old flat but from the other direction so that's cool and on the way I had to stop by my post office to pick up a letter and I had to wait almost an hour so that's definitely a con of this new place the post office is a disaster so not looking forward to picking up a lot of mail from there but let's focus on the good and enjoy a walk in this beautiful garden So I'm now on the highest point of the Schönbrunn Palace Garden and what you see right there is Palace Schönbrunn from the back side and when we look over here this here is the so-called Gloriette which was built in 1775 so that was the later part of the reign of Maria Theresa of Austria and in the 19th century this middle part right here was used as a dining hall and they had built a little kitchen somewhere off the side but that was I think then taken down again I think in 1925 and in 1945 unfortunately the east wing that part was hit by a bomb but that was then later rebuilt after the war and now this middle part here is a coffee house so you can go and just have a coffee and enjoy the wonderful view over Vienna. What I love so much about this park is not just that it's huge but that it also has so many different areas like you have the areas where there's just beautiful flowers then you have forest areas like here which is great in summer when it's hot then you have the beautiful buildings you have the beautiful architecture and Roman ruins so it's it's an adventure every time I go here and of course there's quite a bit of wildlife here as well We also have a zoo as part of Schönbrunn and if you ever come to Vienna I would like to ask you to consider not going to the zoo to not support the imprisonment of poor animals. But of course in the end it's your decision. So up there we can see the Gloriette where we were before.
Can you see the rainbow? How cool! So I just came home from my walk. I have my 10,000 steps, so that's great. And one of my viewers had asked to see what a European kitchen looks like. <laughs> so this is a small European kitchen. It's nothing spectacular. It's a lot smaller than my last kitchen, but what can I do? So here's still a lot of packaging <laughs> that I need to store somewhere else and some glasses I still need to unpack, but that's it. That's the last thing I need to unpack. But I do have a pretty cool view over Vienna, I would say. And I am starving, so I want to make myself a nice protein shake. I like using organic oat milk. Then I'll add a heap spoonful of almond flour for my protein, some ground flax seeds, some cinnamon, half of a banana, and two handfuls of frozen raspberries. So I'm going to enjoy my smoothie now, download everything I have just filmed at Castle Schönbrunn and edit it so that you have a vlog to watch. Hope to see you in the next one. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.